Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Planning and Development Council. And we welcome all the members of the public who are joined us for this uh, meeting. My microphone is on, but I don't know. Can anybody in the audience hear it? I'm seeing. Oh, OK. I saw a hand behind an ear, and I felt badly, because I, too, worry about that. Um, Madam Clerk, we have regrets from Councillor Robinson. and. Uh, Council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? I don't see any. How about a, a mover and seconder to resolve into Committee of the Whole? Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Duddock, all in favor? Opposed, if any. Council is now meeting in a relaxed uh, uh, set of rules called Committee of the Whole, the better to consult with the public on these planning matters. Council, the first consent item before us is the proposed removal of the H holding provision at Green Ginger Developments. And if this is a, if this really is a consent item, I would expect a mover to adopt it. Otherwise, uh, I'll uh, look for questions. Councillor Noll. I'll move the uh, staff recommendation, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Are there any members of the public here with information for council on this item? All those in favor? Opposed, if any, the consent item is adopted. The second consent item is a partial release of easement at King's Christian Collegiate. I'll, I'll uh, same explanation. Councillor Grant moves it. Any members of the public with information for the council on this? All in favor? Opposed, if any, that consent item is consented to. Now, council, you have two confidential consent items, C1 and C2. I'm advised that C1 uh, has attracted some questions and a desire by a member of council to go into camera. Uh, to pursue those questions. And so I would like to suggest that you allow me to move that to the end of the meeting so that we don't inconvenience the public. So, all right, so we'll just do that. On C2, can I have a mover? Councillor Duddock moves item C2. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. Confidential consent item C2 is consented to. Now we have a public hearing item, and uh, that is the public meeting and recommendation report <laughs> on in zone monitoring and review zoning bylaw amendments. And if you'll give your attention to Mr. Nethery, he will summarize the report. I know you've all read carefully, but the public needs to know what you're about to talk about. Mr. Nethery. Thank you, Your Worship and members of council. Uh, I will do my best to summarize very quickly. Uh, the bylaw 2016-023 uh, that's before you tonight uh, is here for three main reasons. Uh, which is, and these three main reasons are why these items weren't before you at your last meeting in January. Uh, the first is that uh, in that intervening period, a number of settlements to, or appeals rather, to the original passage of Zoning Ballot 2014-14 have since settled. Uh, that frees up some present and existing regulations that can now be reviewed by council uh, where there are some housekeeping matters uh, that have been identified by staff. Uh, there are some new regulations also contained uh, in some of those settlements, particular on employment matters, that in the opinion of, st of staff are necessary and appropriate to extend to other zones. Uh, that would be the dry cleaning uh, matter that you see in the amendment. The second theme of issues is that staff have been monitoring legislative changes and our own zoning interpretations over the past couple of years. Uh, in this amendment does identify a couple of matters where a different approach has been identified that would provide for a better planning outcome for the town. Uh, the third item, uh, which you've seen a few times now, is clarifying the intended application of some existing regulations uh, where those OMB settlements have since, or where those OMB appeals have since been uh, released, for lack of a better word. There is an ability now, a first ability for council to consider some necessary and good changes on these matters. Altogether, these items are now before council tonight as the in-zone monitoring zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, as noted in the staff report, an alternative recommendation can be provided if uh, public comment is received. Up till now, uh, staff has not received any information. Should some additional comment be uh, raised here tonight by the public, uh, I'm happy to present an alternate recommendation for your consideration. And at this time, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.
gesagt hast. And the microphones are back. And Councillor Adams is still moving the staff recommendation. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that's carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Nethery. The first discussion item, item number four on tonight's agenda, is the recommendation report <clears throat> and the draft plan of standard co of uh, condominium on Riverstone residences of Oakville. And uh, if you'll give your attention to Mr. Barrett, he will provide the same service Mr. Nethery just provided us on this item. Mr. Thank you, Barrett. Mr. Mayor and members of council. A draft plan of condominium application has been submitted to create a standard condominium for phase one of the development, which consists of 281 residential units, two guest suites, 432 parking spaces, two designated heritage buildings, landscaping, roadways, and a public square. The property is located on the north side of Spears Road, east of Kerr Street, and south of Shepherd Road. The subject lands were part of an Ontario Municipal Board hearing, which resulted in a decision to permit two residential apartment towers, uh, which are 19 and 21 stories in height, containing a total of 532 units and retail space at grade. A chronology was provided in Appendix A of the staff report. Final site plan approval was granted on June 2nd, 2014. The development is currently under construction with occupancy of phase one expected to start in early 2016. The subject draft plan condominium application relates to phase one only. The planning department undertook a circulation of the application to ensure that technical and financial matters have been satisfactorily addressed. Staff recommends approval of the application subject to conditions in Appendix D as the following requirements have been satisfied. Uh, the proposed plan of condominium meets the criteria established in Section 5124 of the Planning Act. The proposed plan of condominium conforms to the Livable Oakville official plan and complies with the zoning bylaw. A full circulation has been undertaken and there are no outstanding financial or planning issues to be resolved. The development has been granted final site plan approval and the application is for a phased standard condominium which is related to tenure of the approved development. In conclusion, Your Worship, staff put forth the following recommendation uh, for Council's consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Council, we have no listed delegations. I'll ask if there's any members of the public here with information for Council on this matter. I see none. Council, how do you propose? Councillor Duddock. Move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Duddock. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any? Carried. That brings us to item number five, and we change up the uh, batter in the batter's box. We go to Lee Musson. And uh, this is the recommendation report on the draft plan of standard condominium for King Ridge Developments, Inc. on uh, Spears Road. And a word for the public, uh, in our system, in our process, the recommendation report follows a, an extensive period of consultation and an issues report that was at council uh, much earlier. And, uh, and as a result, Councillor Duddick? Your Worship, unless uh, any other members of council or possibly members of the public wanted to speak to this item, I'd be willing to move it. Thank you, Councillor. Are there members of the public with information for council on this matter? I see none. Council, do you wish to dispense with the uh, summary of the, of the item? Uh, it's duly moved then. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? That is adopted. Lee, thank you very much. <laughs> you got a base hit without swinging. <laughs> um, all right. Council, that brings us to item number six, the third discussion item, and that's the notice of intention to designate 257 Allen Davidson Drive. And we have Susan Shepard here to provide us uh, with the summary of your report. And because this is an important designation uh, for heritage purposes, this is important to the town, I, can I recommend that uh, for those who are watching at home, we, we uh, enjoy the presentation, Ms. Shepard? 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship and members of Council. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of my colleague, Carolyn Van Slechtenhorst, who is the author of the report, uh, to recommend the uh, designation of 257 Ellen Davidson Drive, which is the Cating House Parquette. And so I have a very short presentation to take you through, but the location of the parquet is um, in the general location of the Cating House, which was a historic structure that unfortunately burned in 2009. Um, so you can see what the structure here looked like um, prior to the fire and then after the fire. Through extensive consultation with the property owners and their uh, agents, ERA architect, um, a solution, uh, the best possible solution considering the circumstances, uh, has been arrived at to salvage uh, the historic brick that was used to construct the uh, the house and to use it in the reconstruction of a wall in the uh, area now known as the Cating House, uh, the Cating Parquet. And so a plaque has been erected in addition to the, the wall. There have been plantings that uh, refer to the historic use of the property as an orchard. And uh, we have heritage planning staff have worked with park staff, as this is now a town-owned property, um, to bring forward the notice of intention to designate for the Cating House Parkette. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there members of the public with information for the, for the council on this matter? Uh, I see none. Um, council, do you have questions or a motion? Councillor Hutchins is moving the motion. Any discussion? Uh, I can't let this go by without saying, you know, this makes me regret all over again what I thought was developer lightning at work on, on the destruction of the property, but we've made the best of a bad situation, I guess. Uh, all those in favor, <coughs> opposed to Finney, and uh, it, is, uh, it is carried, sadly. Kating House is not, but anyway. Now, item number seven is the Cultural Heritage Landscape Strategy Implementation Phase One Inventory. And the recommendation is that the, uh, the motion before us is that the recommendations contained within the Cultural Heritage Landscape Strategy Implementation Phase One Inventory be endorsed. And two, that the Cultural Heritage Landscape Strategy Implementation Phase Two Assessments and research proceed immediately for the properties identified as high priority within the phase one inventory. And if you'll give your attention to Ms. Shepard, she will summarize the work for the public. Uh, thank you, Your Worship and members of council. Just before I begin the presentation, I wanna make a slight clarification on page 69 of your agenda. Please, uh, the date of this report should be January 27th, 2016, not 2015. And so, I'd like to take you through a little bit of the background that led up to uh, the study that's here before you today. Um, cultural heritage landscapes have uh, been the focus of interest uh, from both heritage planning staff, the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee, and Council for quite a number of years. Um, in 2014, in January, Council endorsed the Cultural Heritage Landscape Strategy, which was a document that set out how we would identify cultural heritage landscapes and gave us a number of tools to preserve them, such as designation under either Part 4 or Part 5 of the Heritage Act or the implementation of policies uh, possibly under the official plan. The strategy included a number of recommendations. Uh, one was to create a, a heritage impact assessment terms of reference for cultural heritage landscapes, which was done and which staff have been using for the past couple of years, and also to conduct an inventory of town-owned properties uh, to determine which ones would be uh, potential cultural heritage landscapes. In 2015, the Heritage Planning Work Plan identified the implementation of the Cultural Heritage Land Landscape Strategy to happen in 2017. However, Council requested that uh, staff undertake a review of the town's major open space areas, uh, thus expanding the scope of the inventory from town-owned properties to larger open space areas in the town regardless of their ownership, to determine if they should be appropriately designated as cultural heritage landscapes and also uh, essentially to complete the work in 2015. And so we undertook an RFP uh, in the summer of uh, 
2015 uh, for the phase one implementation of the cultural heritage landscape strategy. We do anticipate there will be three phases in order to complete uh, the full implementation. Phase one being the inventory, which I'm here to speak to you about today. Phase two is further research and assessment. And phase three is implementation of protection measures. And so the RFP was issued uh, for all three phases, although, of course, we're starting at the beginning with phase one. The consultants retained were Lori Smith Heritage Consulting, and we do have uh, Lori and one of her associates, Amy Barnes, here today. I'll ask them to just stand up and give a wave. Um, they are here to uh, provide any assistance that I might need with some of the, the detailed information if there are questions on any of the 63 inventory reports that they've prepared. Um, so the, the inventory document uh, that is before you today was endorsed by the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee earlier this year in January. So, <laughs> excuse me, the inventory has created a separate listing for each property, of which there are 63, ranging from rural properties to properties, uh, town-owned properties like parks um, and historic lakefront estates, many different types of properties. Each inventory uh, has a separate, has a separate uh, report that includes photos of the property, uh, to the best possible um, extent of the, the consultant's access to the property, maps to provide context and site information, a list of built features or natural heritage features and man-made landscape features. Uh, it give, each inventory report gives an update on the current status of the property, whether or not it's designated already under the Heritage Act, or if it's listed on the Oakville Heritage Register, or if there are other protections in place. Each inventory report also gives a recommendation for future action on each property and also a priority for the action as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. The recommendations for priority are based on a number of different uh, circumstances, essentially, um, that have combined to, uh, to create a more urgent situation than some of the other properties that are included in the inventory. And so priority levels are based on what the existing condition of the site is and what its components are and how vulnerable they are, both from natural um, forces such as uh, encroaching vegetation or erosion or from uh, external forces such as development pressures. The priority level also looked at what the existing protection measures were for each, prop or each property, um, how effective and complete those protection measures were, and then also the degree to which each site met the criteria as a significant, significant cultural heritage landscape. Because we do have a number of properties that were included in the inventory that have resulted in findings that say, while these properties certainly might have built heritage resources on them, they may not be a cultural heritage landscape. In the document before you tonight, there are eight high priority properties, 16 medium priority properties, 27 low priority properties, and then 12 properties for which no further action is recommended. The high priority properties, uh, as the, the mayor has already mentioned, are recommended to proceed to phase two of the implementation of the cultural heritage landscape strategy immediately. These properties include the Brawny Harbor and the Brawny Bluffs, uh, a number of rural properties including the Bowbeer Farmstead, uh, the McMichael Farm, Hilton Farm, the Bigger Farm, and an unnamed farm, as well as the Raydor Estate, also known as Glen Abbey. This is just an example of what one of the uh, inventory sheets does look like. There is a sample included in the agenda package, but all of the individual inventory reports are available online so that anyone can access them and, and review the material that's contained within. The medium and low priority properties are considered to be less threatened by development or natural forces. Uh, in cases of the medium priority properties, uh, it's been determined that the existing protection may not be sufficient and it might be a property that we will need to examine in the nearer future, but not immediately. For low priority properties, there are no known threats and the existing protection is deemed currently sufficient. And so examples of medium and low priority properties are the Brawny Cemetery and Sovereign House. 
For properties that have no further action recommended, it may be one or a combination of the following uh, items. Either the existing protection is sufficient, or the property may not be a cultural heritage landscape, although there still might be a built heritage resource on the site. There may be a loss of the heritage resources that we had thought were originally there that warranted the property's inclusion in the, the inventory in the first place. Or the consultants may have determined that the property isn't as significant as we thought it may have potentially been, and that no additional protection is warranted. The next steps for the project are uh, phase two, uh, research and assessment. And so while the inventory reports that have been completed by our consultants, I think are incredibly thorough, uh, they are very still high level and definitely more research is needed to determine uh, what exact heritage attributes are on the site and how they should best be protected. And so we have recommended to Council that the high priority properties uh, move on to phase two immediately, whereas the timeline for our medium and our low priority properties on the inventory is undetermined and really just means that the, they'll probably ad be addressed in-house on an as-needed basis as circumstances change. The final stage, phase three, is the implementation of protection measures. And so the appropriate protection measures will be determined by the completed research assessments in phase two. These measures may include part four designation under the Ontario Heritage Act, so that's for individual properties. Part five designation under the Ontario Heritage Act for cultural heritage landscapes that may consist of <coughs> one or more properties. Uh, official plan policies or uh, potentially commemoration and interpretation. And so the recommendation before you today is that the recommendations contained within the, the phase one inventory be endorsed and that the phase two research assessments proceed immediately for the properties identified as high priority. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Ms. Shepard. Uh, Council, are there questions? Councillor O'Meara. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. I have um, two questions. Uh, firstly, as pertains to the first recommendation that <clears throat> um, contained within the cultural heritage landscape, phase one inventory be endorsed. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, if you can maybe clarify what that means exactly. And uh, so you know where I'm coming from. I'm speaking in particular to the Bronte uh, athletic field. And, and that was sort of a secondary recommendation that was brought forward by a stakeholder group. And, and um, while I'm always happy to, uh, um, you know, to, to have that sort of analyzed, I'm just wondering what, uh, what that process entails and, and if it is deemed to have cultural heritage or not, sort of, if you can maybe walk me through the process on, on how that works and, and what the end result might be. Um, certainly. So for a property such as the Brawny Athletic Field, which I don't have the book in front of me, but I do believe is identified as a low priority property, um, and the recommendations involve commemoration and interpretation of that site, something like that would happen, I think, as... A, one budget is available for that type of uh, commemorative process, um, but also as uh, you know, as there are requests to to move forward on items such as that. So the the high priority properties are the ones that we're aware of development pressures right now. Uh, it doesn't mean that properties that are currently identified as medium or low priority will stay in that category forever. And so as uh, issues arise as we become aware of more information. Um, uh, priority levels will change and staff are, will be prepared to, to deal with them as we need to. Thank you. And um, my second question uh, has to do with the uh, second uh, recommendation um, to move to phase two assessments with the priority areas. Uh, in particular, again, I'm, I'm speaking with regards to the Brawny uh, Harbor. Uh, in terms of, of what council recognized as a priority um, to get more information with the Glen Abbey lands and to seek more information to make a better decision, uh, we currently have a number of other uh, plans going on in Brawny 
drawn to you. We have a growth review area. We have a harbors master plan area. And my worry is that um, we would be moving to a secondary phase uh, without really taking into full consideration those other studies that are happening or those two might not be dovetailing at the same time. Um, and, and I'm wondering if you can uh, provide some clarification in terms of how those studies would dovetail and how they would fit together and so we're not putting any one uh, cart above the other. Uh, certainly, Councillor, because that question is a little bit higher level than the study, I'm going to defer to the Director of Planning Services. Through you, Your Worship, thank you, Councillor, for your question. Um, we've had a chance to discuss and think about that earlier in the day. Uh, simply put, we are very much aware that the growth studies are occurring, and uh, we also understand the Harbour's Master Plan is about to, to start. So it's our clear intention to make sure that we have those work plans all synced, as it were, so that we can uh, take the information as required and bring it to council on all three matters uh, as appropriate. So then the, the, the planning staff is going to proceed uh, understanding that this is currently designated as a growth area and it's currently designated uh, um, for other studies going on and that will be sort of brought together in, in, in this plan then, is that correct? Through your worship, yes. The designation is, in fact, in the uh, town's official plan. We must have regard to that as we go through the process. Perfect. Thank you very much, sir. Any other questions? Are there delegations on this, Madam Clerk? You want to call the delegations? Uh, the delegation is Ashley Rivett from Ruth Victor and Associates, uh, representing McMichael Farm. Welcome, Council looks forward to your information. Thank you. Um, good evening, Your Worship, members of Council. Oh, am I on? Okay, good. Uh, my name is Ashley Rivett, and I'm a registered professional planner with Ruth Victor and Associates. I'm here this evening uh, to actually speak on behalf of two of our clients. The first um, is uh, 3367 Dundas Street West. It's referred to in the staff report as the McMichael Farm. Um, the property has been identified as a high priority property in the phase one inventory. Uh, our client has also retained the services of Mr. David Kumin, who is also a registered professional planner, and he's qualified to advise on matters of cultural heritage. Mr. Kumin is unable to attend th uh, this evening. However, he has provided written correspondence to the planning department, which was attached to my submission that was, I believe, circulated to all members of council. Mr. Kumin has completed his own assessment of the property and he has identified a series of errors and inconsistencies with the consultant's findings. Just to take you through a few of those, um, first of all, the assessment is, describes the property as a 2.3 acre uh, farmstead, a 19th century farmstead, pardon me, um, when in fact the property, I'm sorry, <laughs> I've misspoken. The, uh, the assessment identifies it as being, I believe, a 200-acre farmstead, whereas the property actually as it stand is, stands is only 2.3 acres. And um, the original farmstead that occupied the property is no longer on the property. Uh, the farmhouse is not a, that is on the property presently is not a 19th century structure. Um, and David McMichael, the namesake that uh, staff have used, died in 1885, which was 25 years prior to the building actually being constructed. Um, the, with the exception of the farmhouse, which Mr. Kumin agrees may have potential cultural heritage value, the remaining buildings identified in the inventory were built by the current owner within the last 30 years and are predominantly constructed of salvaged and scrap materials. A number of the features that the consultants have identified in the inventory are either not on the property or no longer exist. This includes a metal barn, which is no longer on the property, the gravel driveway, which is not on the property, uh, the orchard, which no longer remains, and as I mentioned before, the 1877 farmhouse uh, occupied by David McMichael. This no longer remains either. Based on his assessment, Mr. Kumin is of the opinion that the property at 3367 Dundas Street West is not a cultural heritage landscape, is misclassified as a heritage or historical farmstead, and should not be called the McMichael Farm. Since then, we have attended a meeting on the subject property with the town of Oakville, heritage staff, the town's heritage consultant, as well as our client. During this site meeting, town staff and the town's heritage consultant 
were given an opportunity to inventory the property in light of Mr. Kumin's findings. The discussions were very positive, and I think staff would likely agree that the uh, existing, that other than the existing farmhouse, the lands do not warrant a cultural heritage landscape inventory assessment. Based on the inaccuracies identified in the consultant's assessment, I encourage council to defer their decision on the recommendation so as to allow her or heritage staff and the town's heritage consultant an opportunity to correct their report and remove the property at 3367 Dundas Street West from the inventory altogether. The second client that I'm here on behalf of is Madame Holmes. They own the property at 1158 Burnham Thorpe Road East, which is referred to in the staff and consultant report as the Bobier Farms. This property has been assessed a low priority property. And similar to my previous request, I'm encouraging council to defer their decision on the recommendation so as to allow heritage staff an opportunity to correct the reports, uh, the report based on some inaccuracies and errors. By deferring the decision, our client would also have an opportunity to retain a qualified heritage professional to review the assessment that has been prepared and to formulate an opinion on the assessment. Uh, it would also allow our client to engage in dialogue with town staff regarding the cultural heritage value of the property. Therefore, in conclusion, both our clients are very much willing to work with the town and town staff to resolve these matters. And by deferring your decision this evening, we would have an opportunity to do so. We'd I'd like to thank you for your time, and I'm available for questions. Thank you very much for your information. Are there questions? Uh, Councillor Elgar? Thank you very much. So, so I just want to make sure we get it right. You're saying you met with town staff and they think it shouldn't be high priority? I on, would not on like to... On uh, 3367? Sorry, uh, through you, Your Worship, I don't want to speak for staff. Oh, However, you did, though. You did. I think, I think I can make a... I think that a statement that I can make is town staff agreed that a number of the buildings identified on the property when we were visiting the site did not warrant preservation. And I think that um, through further assessment, I'm sure the town would agree that this property should not be on the inventory. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll confirm with staff. Thanks very much. Thank you. Any other questions for the delegation? Councillor Grant. Just, I, I want some clarification. In, in your letter regarding uh, the uh, Bevere Farm, uh, you mentioned that there are inaccuracies and errors and that uh, we need to correct a report, but in your submission to us now, you've just mentioned there's been no time to get an assessment of the property done. Right, so because we've, uh, we've assessed, we've taken one property and done a, a thorough assessment on it and we've identified errors and inaccuracies, we would like the opportunity to do so on our other client's property. Um, we've selected only one of, I think it was 63 properties and we've identified quite a few errors. And so uh, I, th I think it's, um, it's an assumption that there could be errors elsewhere, and so we would like an opportunity to, uh, for our client to be able to retain a qualified professional to complete a, a similar assessment to identify any errors. The concern is um, proceeding with a report that has errors and inaccuracies in it and having the ability to go back and take a look at those um, with a qualified professional. The letter is more of a boilerplate. You really don't know what's there or not there. On that property, no. On the property uh, on Dundas Street, we do know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. I wonder, um, can you see the recommendation on the screen? I can. So in part two, uh, what the recommendation before Council is to authorize assessment mm -hmm. and research. Yes. And if I'm hearing you correctly, you're not objecting to assessment and research. You're, um, you're, to you're calling for it. We are. However, the concern is that the report that's before you is there's errors. And so the concern is once you're placed on a list, it's quite challenging to get yourself removed from a list. And so we don't believe we should be on the list in the first place. And so we ask that we be removed from the list altogether um, because in our opinion and in our consultant's opinion, um, we shouldn't be on there. Okay, thank you very much for your information. You. Ms. Shepherd, are you ready to uh, share any answers with council? Uh, yes, uh, Your Worship. Um, I can certainly confirm that town staff, uh, once we were made aware of the concerns from um, uh, from the property owners uh, of 3367 Dundas Street, 
um, West, uh, made every effort after the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee meeting to actually uh, attend a site visit at the property as our consultants were not given access during the time of the inventory report. I haven't had a time to review Mr. Kuming's uh, research, and uh, I would agree uh, that there are some inaccuracies in our inventory report, but I'd like to emphasize that it is just an inventory report. And so the further research and assessment that we are recommending to take part in phase two, I think would actually bring to light and further review some of the information uh, that has been uh, presented to you here today. And so heritage planning staff certainly stand by our recommendation to include uh, the property we're referring to as the McMichael Farm as a high priority property so that we can deal with uh, the research and assessment as quickly as possible and correct any inaccuracies. Uh, but the inventory is, is just that, it's an inventory. And so, uh, you know, having properties in the inventory certainly doesn't preclude them from any kind of future research and assessment by both town staff and our consultants and also by the property owners as well. So if I'm hearing you correctly, there really is no jeopardy to anyone from being on that list. Uh, nothing further than what they already have in terms of their status as being a property listed on the Oakville Heritage Register. Okay, thank you for that. Now I've got a question for staff from Councillor Elgar and questions indicated from Councillor Duddick and Councillor O'Meara. Any others? Councillor Elgar. Well, actually, uh, Mayor Burton, the question I had was exactly the question you've asked of staff, and I'm satisfied with the answer, so thank you. Great working with you. Thank you. Uh, makes uh, Councillor Duddick next. Thank you. Um, just to give the other uh, members of council some comfort level, I'm somewhat surprised hearing that it's difficult to get off that properties of interest list. I, I haven't found that to be the fact, given that sometimes staff come to us requesting to have a property removed from the properties of interest list. Unlike some people tend to portray it that uh, they have to go through a big onerous process in order to have it removed. I haven't experienced that. Is that uh, something that you've experienced? Uh, through you, Your Worship, I don't know that I can speak directly on behalf of the property owners, but the process you're referring to is a notice of intention to demolish for our properties that are listed on the Oakville Heritage Register. Uh, those are issues that Council deals with on a relatively regular basis. Uh, the process is usually dealt with within 60 days. Um, and so while that process can uh, be part of the uh, what we're recommending for the, the next step of the implementation of the cultural heritage landscapes uh, strategy. Um, it's something that would be determined through uh, further research and assessment. And so uh, our recommendation to move forward with actually further research and assessment and identifying the property as the McMichael Farm as a high priority property means that it will be dealt with sooner rather than later. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if a designation is recommended at that point in time, there is a process for the property owners to follow. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Meara. Thank you, Your Worship. And I, I, I might ask for some assistance here because I'm not sure where this question needs to be directed to. Um, um, per perhaps I'll start with planning. Uh, how... How, are, how long ago is our planning uh, agenda posted publicly? Is it two weeks, I believe? I'll defer to the commissioner. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's probably the best question from the clerk. Uh, but the agendas are presented about 10 days, the Thursday, uh, two Thursdays prior to them actually being heard at the meeting. Thank you, and I, I believe I heard um, our staff tell us that they haven't had a, a chance to read through the 10, 12 pages that we received on a Friday at some point and get to the clerk's office. So perhaps it is best sent to the delegate that, you know, and us, for us to make an informed decision and to sit here and read the material that you've brought to us um, with over 10 days posted, it's very difficult for us to sit here and to go through this information when it's not given uh, in advance. So while I appreciate your concerns and I appreciate staff's, uh, a number of years ago, council uh, made a decision to allow more time for documents to be and reports to be published uh, uh, um, uh, publicly for this exact reason. So I, I'm just having troubles reading through everything and making a quick decision on the fly and being able to ask the question prepared that I should be able to ask 
task, given that it was on a Friday of a long weekend before we're meeting on a Tuesday. When I would hope in your profession you would know that that uh, we would be meeting on a Tuesday evening and, and we need to have this information. So uh, perhaps in the future it would be advantageous to get this to us as soon as possible so we can make a, a decision and perhaps ask you questions that, that might help your client in the future. So uh, I apologize if it's not a question, but there were a couple it's, in there. It's Really, uh, I should have stopped you sooner. It's it's not even your job. So, um, and uh, I apologize. It's certainly, council certainly does not subscribe to the, the message you've just been handed. And on behalf of everyone, I apologize for that. Um, thank you very much for thank your information you. and thank for you. enduring what you endured. Um, are there other delegations? Any other members of the public with information for council on this matter? All right, I'll confine it to table. Councillor Hutchins, you have a, a, a go? Yeah, I'd like to uh, endorse the recommendations and see if it was page two. So Councillor Hutchins moves the recommendation before you. Discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Opposed? It carries. Vote, Beg your pardon? A recorded vote. All right. There are there are people who believe that every vote should be recorded. So why not? Uh, so those to be recorded in favor, please rise to be named. Councillor Lischina, Councillor Adams, Councillor Grant, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Lapworth, Councillor Elgar, Mayor Burton, Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Giddings, Councillor Duddick, and Councillor O'Meara. Uh, I declare the the motion carried. Now, um, Council, you also have before you item number eight. The, and Diane Childs is here to present the Heritage Planning Work Plan update. And I think this is important too, especially in a town that cares about heritage as much as Oakville does. So for the members of the public who are maybe watching, I, uh, I invite everyone's attention to Diane and her presentation. Thank you very much. Um, this evening, I'll play. This evening, I hope to provide a brief update to the Heritage Planning three-year work plan. Oh, there you go. See, I'm not technically challenged. I'm sorry. The three topic areas I will cover include the area of focus in the work plan, the accomplishments from 2015, and the 2016 to 2018 initiatives with focus on the 2016 priorities. The areas of focus include identifying and protecting heritage resources, these are the day-to-day -day work such as permit review that staff undertake, streamlining policies and procedures, undertaking studies and reports related to, the, to heritage, and promoting heritage conservation through outreach and education. With respect to 2015 accomplishments, 2015 was the second year um, for the Heritage Grant Program. So uh, in my presentation, you can see a picture of uh, the replacement cedar shingle roof from 41 Navy Street. Um, there was the implementation of the Cultural Heritage Landscape Strategy, update to the 1st and 2nd Street Heritage Conservation District. A couple of designations um, came through and the Heritage Street naming process. There was also a lot of work by heritage staff, and we do have amazing heritage planners, as you're aware, to support other planning initiatives, such as work going on with the Downtown Streetscape and Cultural Hub Study, the Oakville Arena Redevelopment, the Post Office, 3169 Dundas Street West Development, and 87 Reynolds Street Relocation and Restoration. With respect to the 2016-2018 initiatives, the work plan is attached as Appendix A to the report, and um, there is a color-coded scheme. I know you have it in color. Um, completed projects are highlighted in green. Ongoing projects are highlighted in blue. And new initiatives are, are updates to project status and or time are highlighted, highlighted for you in yellow. The priorities for 2016 include dealing with the appeal of the 1st and 2nd Street Heritage Conservation District, updating the old Oakville Heritage Conservation District, Phase two, as Sue was talking about, of the Cultural Heritage Landscape Strategy. Continue with, the three, uh, with year three of the Heritage Grant Program. The reinstatement of a plaque program. 
the five-year review of the delegation bylaw, and developing a new policy for Heritage Conservation Street or entry signage. So that ends my presentation, but I'd like to point out that I too made a mistake on my date. Um, the, in the, the recommendation, it says January 13th, where in fact that was the report that was written for the Heritage Committee, and in fact it should be, the recommendation to be received should be dated January 26th. As on yes. the screen. As on the screen. Well, <laughs> luckily right the, the clerk has the typo bylaw, so uh, no harm done. No I harm, apologize. no foul, right? Uh, all right, well, thank you very much for the report. Uh, I think I can speak for Council when I say that we're all very proud of the work of our Heritage Department and the pro great progress that's been made on that front over the last many years. Um, Council, uh, is there a mover to, re to uh, for the recommendation? Uh, Councillor Lapworth, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Thank you, Ms. Childs. Um, Council, before we go into camera for C1, would you like to uh, deal with the Heritage Oakville Advisory Committee minutes? Councillor Duddock. So Councillor Duddock is moving the recommendations as you receive them. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any, and the Heritage minutes are adopted. Now, Council, we need a motion to go into a, uh, a meeting closed to the public so that uh, item C1 which concerns planning department fee appeals may be considered uh, in the absence of the public under section 239.2 of the Municipal Act because it deals with litigation or potential litigation and client solicitor privilege. So I need a mover for that. Councillor Hutchins is moving it already. Now I need a vote. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Madam Clerk, please rig the chamber for a meeting uh, closed to the public. All right, I'll call the uh, Planning and Development Council meeting back to order in, in the public session. Council has met briefly in a session closed to the public in accordance with Section 239.2 of the Municipal Act because Council wanted to deal with a matter of litigation or potential litigation and solicitor client privilege having to do with planning department fee appeals. Um, uh, council uh, would now be in order to have a motion to rise and report from the Committee of the Whole. Councillor Elgar, uh, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. I, um, I rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on consent items one and three, confidential consent items C1 and C2, Public hearing item three, discussion items four, five, six, seven, and eight, and advisory committee minutes item nine, as noted by the clerk. And before I ask for a movement and seconder for that report, did we need a motion for C1? Uh, Karen, I think she has. Yes. To receive? Uh, you can pass that motion. Right, so where is that? Give me that. All right, so council, I need a mover uh, and seconder for this motion because we're, in, we're no longer in committee of the whole. That staff be authorized to proceed in appeals to the Ontario Municipal Board under section 69.3 of the Planning Act in accordance with the report from the legal department dated January 21st, 2016. Councillor Adams moves, Councillor Lapworth seconds. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. And now, if I could have a mover and seconder for the report of the Committee of the Whole. Councillor Lischina, Councillor Hutchins, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any. And the report is adopted. Council, is there any new business of an emergency, congratulatory, or condolence nature to occupy us tonight? Seeing none, I'll ask for a mover and seconder for the bylaws. Councillor Knoll, I need another hand. Councillor Adams, thank you for being so quick. This is authority for the bylaws as listed in the agenda. And uh, there's a, and I'll just read them, 2016, 18, 19, 21, and 23, and 30, the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the meeting. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and the bylaws are adopted. That completes our agenda.
It's been great working with you, and we are adjourned.